Mr. Mark Bamuti Joseph. The first African American woman that I ever met was a white chick. <laughs> yeah, from Lubbock, Texas. Molly Melching. Big woman. She moved to Senegal 20 years ago to work for UNESCO. She never left. Molly speaks Wolof. Tree, she's a beast negotiator at the marketplace, highly respected within her community. The Senegalese that I meet refer to Mali as an African, American. <laughs> they refer to me as a black American. When I get off the plane in Senegal, I don't really have plans. I don't have much money. I have Molly's number in my back pocket given to me by friends of friends. I have ideas in my head, also given to me by friends of friends. They say, boy, in Africa, they will love you. Just find the dancers, find the hip hop. Somebody will adopt you, take you in. Don't worry. Don't trip. OK, three days into my trip, I've been hustled out of my drawers. <laughs> and I'm spending money at a pace that's gonna leave me homeless in eight days. I got one of those non-transferable tickets says I gotta be here for four months. In tears, I call Molly. She invites me to her home in Chess. She says I can stay. Molly works for an NGO called Tostan. She's a champion of women's health. Works to fight against female circumcision in rural villages. I become her roadie. I sit in the back seat, gazing at endless stretches of wide open sky as we ride from one end of the country to the other. We ride to the middle of nowhere. Uh, nowhere. We come to a stop in front of a single stone building with a thatched roof. Three girls come out, all smiles and grace. They greet. I think, cool, Molly's going to meet with them, and then we're going to be up. Then this boy comes out, and he starts playing a drum, which I think is kind of annoying to have going on during a meeting. <laughs> you know, but who the hell am I? The American. <laughs> so I just smile and listen for my name. <laughs> Take it all in. All of the nowhere. Africa. Okay, so this kid playing the drum was like this village's version of a mass email. Because I don't know where the hell these people come from, but like 100,000 people descend on the courtyard. Everybody wants to see the one white woman for a thousand miles. Finally, Molly comes out. She says, Bamuti, I need you to distract them. Uh. Molly, I'm a poet, and they don't speak English. <laughs> I ain't got no microphone, megaphone, radio, telephone, whatever. How am I going to keep them distracted? Whatever. I'm withering. Yeah, I need one of my books. Wait. Five minutes later, the entire village, I'm surrounded. Okay. I don't need to astound them. It's cool. To survive, I become hip hop empath. I channel the low beginnings. Fires burning all over the Bronx, post civil rights. Glass ceilings, no lights. No loot, just do what you feel to the groove. A dance floor uprising of youth. I just pray that they buy it. Ah, ah, ah. 
The future aesthetic, the future's not static It's moving kinetically, manic, you mimic a cynic A smith that works with flurried words The world is this minute, magnanimous moment Of future aesthetic, a myth of poetic Cerebral and soulful, vivid, kinesthetic It's not in your head or your heart or your feet It exists in all three Woo! Okay. All right. They're buying it While I'm dancing Cracking them up with my shamrocks Molly is speaking in a language I've never heard of she encourages the Council of Elders to abandon a centuries-old practice, invites them to modernize their attitude towards women. I think, I know another Texan who went into the brown people's country, try to get them to change their ways. Maybe he should have extended a sign of peace first. Molly, extended me. And that's how I became an MC. The hard way. <laughs> Without saying a word. <laughs>